Consider this problem. The height of mercury in a barometer is 760 millimeters at sea level. At this elevation, what is the height of water in an identical barometer? Now we're given the density of mercury, which is 13.6 grams per milliliter, and we're given the density of water, which is one gram per milliliter. Now one milliliter is the same as one cubic centimeter. So the density of mercury can be said to be 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter. But how can we derive the equation that's going to help us to calculate to get the answer? The equation is simple. Once you have it, it's a piece of cake. You plug it in and get the answer, no problem. But let's understand why the equation is the way it is. And let's talk about how to derive it. So let's draw a mercury barometer. So let's say if we have a container that is filled with mercury. Not completely filled, but partially filled. And we're going to take a test tube, and we're going to, that's a terrible looking test tube, but we're going to fill it with mercury. And then we're going to flip this test tube upside down. And so it's going to look like this. Now, inside here is going to be a vacuum. There's not going to be any air molecules there because when, it's, when we place uh, mercury inside the test tube, it displaces any air molecules that was present. So that's a vacuum. So now we have mercury inside this container. Now, on the outside, we have gas molecules. And the weight of all these gases in the atmosphere will exert a downward force on the surface of that fluid. And the weight of mercury will also exert a downward force. And when the weight of the atmosphere equals the weight of mercury, then we have equilibrium. It's going to maintain a certain height. And that height is going to be 760 millimeters because that's the atmospheric pressure. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 1 atm, which is equivalent to 760 millimeters of mercury. So this will occur when the weight of the atmosphere, or the weight of all the gases in the atmosphere, is equal to the weight of all the mercury in this column right here, above this point but up to that point. Now let's do the same with water. So we're going to place some water in this container. And then we're going to take a test tube. We're going to fill it up with water. And then place the test tube upside down. And the reason why we're doing this is to create a vacuum in this region. We don't want any gas molecules to be there. so. That's why we need to do that. So the situation is going to be similar. The weight of the atmosphere will balance out the weight of all the water in this column. So here's the weight of the atmosphere, and that's the weight of the water. When these two forces are balanced, this will not increase or decrease. If it starts too high, it's going to decrease until the weights are balanced. If it starts too low, it's going to increase until the weights are balanced. So it's going to reach a state of equilibrium. So that's going to happen when the weight of all the gases equal the weight of water. Gravity brings things down. So gravity is going to pull the gas molecules down on the surface of the fluid. And it's going to do the same with water. So when those two forces are balanced, then we're going to get a height of this water column. Now we know the height of the mercury column is 760 millimeters. What is the height of the water column going to be? Is it going to be more than 760 or is it going to be less than 760? What would you say? And what is the exact value that it's going to be? Well, since the weight of the mercury is equal to the weight of the atmosphere when it reaches its steady height, and since the weight of water is also equal to the weight of the atmosphere, we could say that the weight of mercury has to be equal to the weight of the water.
So let's write that here. W of H2O has to equal W of HG. Now, because I need space, I'm going to erase everything else. So how can we calculate the weight force? In physics, hopefully you've taken physics. If not, in physics, the weight force is basically equal to mass times the gravitational acceleration. So I'm going to use 1 for water and 2 for mercury, because I don't want to keep writing H2 on HG. So the weight of water is going to be the mass of water times the gravitational acceleration. And the weight of mercury is the mass times G as well. Now, because these two have the same gravitational acceleration, we can cancel it. So the mass of H2O has to equal the mass of mercury. So M1 has to equal M2. Now, you know that density is mass divided by volume. So if we multiply both sides by the volume, we can represent the mass in terms of its volume and density. So mass is equal to D times V, density times volume. So I'm going to replace M with D1 times V1, and the other mass, M2, with D2 times V2. Let's get rid of that. Now, the shape of the test tube is basically, you can approximate it to the shape of a cylinder. Now, what is the volume of a cylinder? The volume of a cylinder, if you recall, is pi r squared times the height. So this is the height of the cylinder, and this is the radius of the cylinder. Now focus on the expression pi r squared. This is the area of the circle. So that's the cross-sectional area of that prism. So we can say that volume of a prism is area times height. So I'm going to replace v1 with a1 times h1 and V2 with A2 times H2. Now, for the test tube that contains the mercury, let's say it's this one, and the test tube that contains the water, they're basically the same because we're using the same identical barometer. The only difference is the height. The height of water will not be the same as the height of mercury. But because we're using the same test tube, the area should be the same. So we can cancel A1 and A2. They're equal to each other. And so now we have the equation that we need to calculate the height of water in an identical barometer. And here it is. D1 H1 is equal to D2 times H2. So now let me get rid of the other stuff so I can finish this problem. Now D1, that's for water. That's the density of 1. And we're looking for the height of water. D2 is the density of mercury. And H2 is the height of mercury, which is 760 millimeters. So it's going to be 13.6 times 760. So the height of the water column is 10,336 millimeters of water. So as you can see, it's very, very high. Now, if you want to draw a picture, let's say this is the mercury column. The mercury column is going to be relatively small compared to the water column. So if I drew another picture, we would need a much longer test tube, assuming that the area of the test tube is the same. We just have to increase the length of the test tube. Now, the right proportions are not accurately depicted in this picture, so it should be a lot taller. So here, the height is only 760 millimeters of mercury, but here, the height is 10,336 millimeters of water. Now, just to get that number in perspective, let's convert that to feet. 
one meter is equal to a thousand millimeters. And one meter is equal to 3.281 feet. So these units cancel and the unit meters cancel as well. So it's 10,336 divided by 1,000 times 3.281 feet. So the height of the water column is about 33.9 feet tall. So that's about three stories high, maybe up to four stories high. So this is very, very tall. So as you can see, it's impractical to try to measure the atmospheric pressure with a water column because the water column has to be very tall for you to accurately measure it. And so you don't want to use it. So as the density of the substance decreases, the height increases. So if we use a low density fluid like water, we need a very, very high column. However, if we use a high density fluid like mercury, the column doesn't have to be so high. And that's why mercury is the ideal fluid used to measure the atmospheric pressure. Because the density of mercury is so high, the volume that's needed to get the mass of mercury that's equal to the, or the weight of mercury that's equal to the weight of the atmosphere, we don't need that much volume. Because if you increase the density, the height decreases. And so you want to use a high density fluid. And mercury is just, it's best suited for this application. So the higher the density, the smaller the height of this column. And so it's more practical to make uh, with this type of uh, fluid. So that's it for this problem. If you ever need to solve any other uh, questions like this, just make sure to use this equation. And now you know how to derive it. Now, it turns out that you can use a barometer not only to measure the atmospheric pressure, but you can also use it to measure the density of an unknown fluid, which this example will illustrate. Now, you don't have to be at sea level to do this. You can be anywhere on a planet to do it. So let's consider this problem. The height of mercury, we're given the density, in a barometer on mountain XYZ is 590 millimeters. So that's the atmospheric pressure on this mountain. So keep this in mind. As the elevation increases, as you go higher up the mountain, the atmospheric pressure decreases. So the atmospheric pressure at this point is 590 millimeters of mercury. At this elevation, what is the density of an unknown fluid that produces a column height of 940? So is the density going to be greater or less than the density of mercury? Well, if you increase the column height, the density will decrease. These two are inversely related. So because the height of the column is larger, the density of this unknown fluid is going to be less than the density of mercury. It's going to be less than 13.6. So let's go ahead and calculate it using this formula. D1H1 is equal to D2H2. Let's say that D1 is the density of mercury, and the height of it is 590 millimeters. Now I'm going to put the units here so you can see how it works. Now we're looking for D2. H2 is 940 millimeters. So what we're going to do to get D2 by itself is to divide both sides by 940 millimeters. So now we could cancel the numbers on the right side. On the left side, notice that the unit millimeters cancel. And so we're left with the unit grams per milliliter which is going to be the unit for D2. So in this formula, what you need to understand is that the units, they have to match. So if D1 is in grams per milliliter, D2 has to be in the same unit, grams per milliliter. So if this is kilograms per cubic meter, then that has to be in kilograms per cubic meter. If the height is in centimeters, then H2 has to be in centimeters. They simply have to match. So if you get a problem where this is in millimeters and that's in centimeters, convert one into the other. 
You can convert millimeters to centimeters or vice versa. It doesn't matter. What matters is that they match. They have to be the same. Which in this problem, they are the same. So now let's calculate D2. So D2 is going to be 13.6 times 590 divided by 940. And so that's going to be 8.536 grams per milliliter. So as predicted, the density of this fluid is less than the density of mercury because the height of the fluid is greater. So as the height of the column increases, the density decreases. And if the height of the column decreases, then you should expect that the density should be higher. So those two are inversely related. And so that's all I got for this video. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how to calculate the height of a fluid in the column if you're given the density or how to find the density of the unknown fluid if you're given the height. So the formula is pretty straightforward, but I hope you understand the concepts that go into deriving that formula. Thanks again for watching.